Hey guys, welcome back to Pantry Living. I'm Stephanie. Today we are out in the garden because we're collecting some wild parsnips to uh, go into a recipe that was suggested to me by a subscriber months ago. And I finally am working on catching up on answering people's comments and I came across it and I went, what perfect timing. So today we're gonna be making scotch broth. It's the first time I've ever made this, so definitely stay tuned. I will share the recipe below, although we are gonna tweak a few things because I don't have everything, of course, as usual, that's in this recipe. But one thing that the recipe does call for is parsnips. And at this time of year, as you can see in the garden, there isn't a whole lot growing. We didn't grow parsnips last year. So today, me and, wait for it, Bunny are out in the garden digging up wild parsnips to uh, put in this soup. Now, wild parsnip is something that you do need to be very careful with handling. You want to make sure you have gloves on because the greens have a... Uh, photosensitive effect that can cause blistering and stuff so you do want to be very careful with that but if you happen to have these around digging them up and eating them is the best way to get rid of them and when we got this property four years ago it was almost all parsnip and as we've been eating it in the spring it's a great treat it's super fresh they're super sweet after all that frost over the winter so we're gonna get them dug up so that we have parsnip for this soup I know you can't get the idea yet but this one is a beauty just wait. Are you helping? He's just eating a lot of dirt. All right, so my first one was a little guy. Got him dug up all out. Kind of what you would expect, sort of grocery store size, in my opinion, a little bit bigger or a large carrot size. But then that other guy came out. Look at that. If I shake down the top there, that is probably at least 14 inches long and a good three inches around. That is gonna be a big one. I only needed two cups of parsnip, I think. I don't remember, I didn't check the recipe before I plunged ahead, but I'm gonna take it in because we'll just put it in the fridge, whatever we don't use and use it again. There's a whole bunch more to dig up, but I don't wanna dig up more than I need because I have a terrible habit of then leaving them sit in the fridge and I waste them. So, great spring food. Again, be very careful with the greens because that is the part that you don't wanna break and get the sap on you. This time of year when they're younger, it's not quite as bad as once they start getting bigger and going to seed. But we're going to take all these legs off. You peel it up and you use it just like you do regular parsnip. It tastes even better in my opinion. So without any further ado, let's go in and see what else we need for this recipe. All right, guys, we are back inside after our adventures of picking parsnip. And let me show you this parsnip now that I have it cleaned up. It's pretty impressive. Look at that. Gorgeous, just gorgeous. Unfortunately, way more than I need. I only need a cup and a half for this recipe. I thought it was two cups, but I might throw a little bit extra in because I have it and there is plenty more out on the property to harvest. So we might bulk this out a little bit, but I will make sure that I put the recipe as it is down below so that uh, you can follow the rules, even though I'm kind of breaking them and putting different things in. So this is a wonderful soup stew. I'm not really sure how it's gonna turn out, but it does use lamb or beef, whichever you prefer or have access to. I'm using lamb. I actually cut up two pounds of uh, lamb stewing meat for this because I had it out for a different project and I thought, why not? And I'm a little bit picky about my meat. So of course, by the time I removed all the pieces that I didn't really want to eat, we actually ended up with only just over a pound. So I am going to throw in at the end a can of my canned lamb. So that's the plan on that. But basically you are a pound and a half of lamb meat and you can use that with uh, bone in if you'd like. If you've got shanks or something like that, you can just put it right in here and let it kind of stew into it all and make that broth into like a lamb broth. I'm actually using canned lamb broth, even though the recipe calls for chicken broth. Didn't really understand that exactly, but hey, maybe that's just how the flavor is supposed to work. So let's get these ingredients into the pot and then we shall see how this tastes all at the end. So one of the first things we're going to do is get some butter heating up in our pot and we're going to fry our onions and garlic. Now, this recipe does call for one medium onion and one leek. I do not have leeks. I also don't have medium onions. I would say these were small. So I'm actually gonna do three of my smaller onions kind of to give that uh, uh, bit in there that is gonna replace the leek. Uh, I know it's not quite the same flavor, but you know what, it's gonna work just fine. I might even throw a few green onions in at the end. Uh, I've got uh, all my onions are growing like mad and I've got uh, tons of tops on everything. Nothing is keeping any longer. So we're trying to get them used up anyways. 
So that's the first step is we're going to cut up these onions and get them pressed with our three cloves of garlic. And then we will let that fry off and then we're gonna add our meat and a whole bunch more ingredients. So I'll bring you back when we've got everything in the pot and we're ready to go. All right, so in our pot, we've got two tablespoons of butter. In goes our three small onions and our garlic. Still using our own garlic from last year. We need to start preserving it and getting it put away because it is starting to go green in the middle. So before we start adding the rest of our ingredients in, one thing that has kind of come up in the last little while for me is that I seem to be edging towards potentially being diabetic. Now there's a long story here that I'm not going to go into in this video, but Basically, I had gestational diabetes with both of my kids. So I've had the experience of dealing with diabetes by food. And so that's something that we have started over the last month, really, really monitoring. Basically, since my birthday, I said, after my birthday, I will do a test and I will figure it out because it's been years since I had. And my blood sugar levels were very, very high. Uh, well, I say very, very high. They were verging on diabetic levels. And so basically that means that we are watching carbs like mad as any diabetics know carbs trigger so much. So I'm interested to see what happens with this because it does have split peas and it does have barley in it, but it is only half a cup of barley and a third of a cup of the uh, split peas. So I am curious to just try it and then test myself after to see what my results are and how my body reacts to this soup. Um, but I really hope it goes well because I think this is going to be delicious. But I just wanted to touch on that because in the future and in upcoming videos, we're going to be talking about some of the changes that we've made to our diet again this year by now really watching carbs, not just bread or gluten. And uh, I think that's something that uh, is going to really kind of start to show in some of my cooking recipes here is we're really monitoring what goes in and I'm subbing out a lot of carb type items for other things. So fingers crossed, this is going to work. I'm kind of cooking it as to the recipe, other than the fact that I don't have any turnips. So when it comes time to add our veggies, I'm using two rutabagas instead of one. I'm replacing the turnip with a rutabaga. Uh, so I'm going to get the rest of the ingredients in this. I'll talk you through it as I go. All right. So you can see here, turn this down now, but our onions are all nice and soft. The garlic has gone brown. Still a little bit of uh, butter left in there. It's going to be delicious flavor. Now I'm going to put in that little over a pound of lamb stewing meat that I had. As I said before, you can use shanks. You could use a roast in here. I think a roast would probably have to cook a little longer. But you're going to let this simmer with the spices and the broth for two hours now. So next step, obviously, is putting those items in. So, so it calls for six cups of broth. I am using four to start with because I want this to be a little thicker because it is a dinner soup. As I mentioned, I am using lamb broth, but it does call for chicken broth. I have a lot more lamb broth than I have chicken. Half a cup of barley, third of a cup of split peas, two bay leaves, one teaspoon of thyme, and one teaspoon of salt. And that's basically it at this point. We're gonna bring it to a boil, then let it simmer for two hours. I'm gonna leave the lid on. Uh, I don't know if it really requires that, but um, I'm gonna leave it on anyways because that will save the moisture all escaping. So I'll bring you back in two hours and we'll see how this is looking. All right, so this has been simmering now for the full two hours. I think we're ready to add the rest of our vegetables. It smells really good already, so I'm super pleased. And the barley, even though it was only a half a cup, has really kind of exploded and soaked up a lot of the moisture. So I did in the end add the extra two cups of the lamb broth. So I have used the full six cups that they uh, recommend using for broth. So at this point, we're gonna add the rest of our vegetables and uh, let that cook for another half an hour. So now into this mixture, we're going to add a cup and a half of sliced carrots, cup and a half of that parsnip, three cups of rutabaga. I ended up, I didn't use all of the two because it just seemed like it was gonna be way too much rutabaga and half a cup of cabbage. I'll be honest, it almost looks like we may end up having to add more liquid, but we'll see how it goes. So at this point now, we're gonna let this cook for another 30 minutes to get all those root vegetables all nice and tender. 
I'm very curious to see how this will uh, taste because this is something that I would can. I know that some sites don't recommend cabbage or barley for canning, but I have canned them before and not had a problem. And uh, everything in this just is stuff that we could produce right here on the homestead, which I think is fantastic. That's the idea of homestead cooking, right? So we're going to let this simmer and I'll bring you back when it's time for taste test. The one thing I did forget was I was gonna add some more lamb meat to this. So I'm definitely gonna do that now so that it has time to simmer in here with everything else and get fully heated through. Then we'll bring you back and see how this tastes. I'm excited. So all in all, we are two and a half, almost three hours now in because my uh, rutabaga was still a little bit firm. So I let it go a little bit longer than the half an hour, but it smells incredible. It's thickened up really, really well. One thing I have to say is, oh, I'm so sad I can't have a slice of homemade bread with this because I bet it would be unbelievable. But we're going to dish it up and give it a try. And we're going to bring you along and we'll see what the first reaction is to uh, trying this scotch broth. I guess it's a soup, but it's kind of a stew. Uh, I mean, maybe I made it a little thicker than it should have been, but it seems very stew-like to me, which I like. So let's try it. Look at that. It looks so good. So on a total side note, before we get into taste testing, because it is stinking hot. Uh, one thing that uh, I tried today to make for the first time, because I thought it would be a great substitute for crackers in our soup, was, oh, I'm going to forget. What are they called? Bar, uh, no. Granola bars? No. Oh, no. What is going on? Flax, crackers. flax crackers. They're flax crackers. And uh, I had the thought that we'd be able to break these up into our soup because flax crackers are extremely low in carb. Uh, a great keto meal. Didn't include a recipe in this because this is my first time making them. I will admit, with dip, they were okay. But uh, anyways, they turned out fantastic. Didn't like them on their own, but with dip, they were really, really good. You probably could put them in this, but... To be honest, it is so thick. I'm going to leave it as it is, but if anybody tries them in it, I'll get them to tell you how they turned out. And maybe if this becomes a staple, I will do a video on it because, uh, yeah, it was kind of a fun little uh, project. So, anyways, back to the regular programming. It's time to try some soup. Stew. Scotch broth. You certainly can, but it's hot, so give me a second. So Alex has decided she's going to be the first taste tester. Good. Yeah, we're going to have to make more of that. But it's hot. Yeah, it's warm. But I'm glad there's enough for lunches. Well, guys, the consensus is nobody's putting the crackers in their soup. So we're going to save those for with dip later on. But it's my turn to give this a try. I'm going to get it with a little bit of the barley, a little bit of the uh, rutabaga. It's still quite warm, but I do like my food hot. Oh, it's very good. It's, I mean, it's very good. It's quite similar to a stew, really. I mean, super simple to make, really, really tasty. This is definitely one that I think will end up in the books for good as long as I get some good results. So stay tuned. <laughs> So perhaps at the end of the video, I'll test myself and I'll tell you what my results were. But I also want to touch on one other thing. This is another challenge we're having with getting rid of the bread and everything is making sure that we have food that the kids enjoy to take for lunches every day for hot lunches. So as Alex just said, this is a win for a hot lunch. So that's always a plus in our book. So a couple days later, but we are finally wrapping up this video on our scotch broth. And I do have to say thank you to Shannon so much for recommending this recipe. It was fantastic. It used what we had impeccably and very, very tasty. And to top it all off, it did not upset my blood sugars. I had a fantastic reading of 6.1 after this meal, which is really, really good and definitely brought it down. So this is a, certainly a keeper. I'm going to test trying to do it as a canning recipe. And once I get that figured out, I will definitely share it with you guys. But hopefully you will try this recipe. I will put the link in uh, below for the site that I got it from. And I look forward to sharing more recipes up and coming here with you.